Thank you for tuning in to Love in Your Hands with Cynthia Clark, soulmate palmist, spiritual teacher, love coach, author, and speaker. We're sharing stories of love and connection and lessons learned along the way. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to ignite soulmate love fast using an innovative system to help you end loneliness and toxic relationships and elevate your vibrational energy to soulmate love and deeply compatible partners. Get started for free at loveinyourhands.com. And now here's your host, Cynthia Clark. Hi there, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Cynthia Clark, and I am your soulmate palmist and spiritual teacher. If you're interested in finding love, just go to loveinyourhands.com. And I am always excited to bring in guests uh, on the show who are willing participants to having me look at their hands. So by the way, if you are one of those people who would like me to look at your hands and you would like to be a guest on the show, uh, just go to loveinyourhands.com forward slash podcast and you can apply to be on the show. Uh, So today we have a wonderful guest. Her name is Sarah, and she's from Cottonwood, Arizona, so the the next town over from where I live, which is Sedona, and we are going to be looking at her hands and, and answering some of her questions and having a lovely conversation about life and love and all that great stuff and what we can learn, what we can all learn from it, so... Uh, welcome to the show, Sarah. Thank you for having me. So this is exciting. So um, why don't you just start out with telling us a little bit about you and uh, your situation? Uh, my name is Sarah. Um, I believe that I have already found love. I've been with the same man almost 10 months now. Um, so I'm interested to see what you have to say about my hands when it comes to love. Um, I have a almost three-year-old son, and yeah, uh, it's pretty hot right now. It's we are experiencing a heat wave, so that's been fun. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, well, a lot of people think Arizona is eternally hot. (laughs) It's not, but this week it is. So So it's okay with me if they think that, though, because (laughs) we don't don't necessarily want to get overloaded with people in our state. (laughs) No, keep our small little towns. (laughs) Yeah, I kind of like Sedona as a as a nice little quaint little town, and Cottonwood is sort of the same. So it's kind of fun. Oh yes. Yeah. So okay. So let's go ahead and do a screen share, and I'm gonna pull up your hands, and we're gonna take a look. Okay. at what you've got going on. So that's my guy right there. <laughs> and here we go. All right. So uh, if you want to start, we could, we could either start with a question or I could just start to go around and sort of tell you what I see as well. Um, definitely. Yeah, no. Go. I, I do have one question for you. Okay, go um, ahead. The lines on your hands, do they change over time or are they always the same? They absolutely do change. When in your life do they change? Like toddler, when you become a teenager, we talk in when you hit 40, when do your hands change? Your lines can change at any time. They actually represent the ebb and flow of your free will and how you interact with your environment. So you can think of them like rivers of energy and they will uh, will definitely change as you change. So um, it does take a little bit of time to reflect a change from my own experience of reading a lot of people's hands, but I I do time-lapse readings with people And it's actually quite fascinating to see some of the changes in a time lapse. And how long is that time lapse usually? uh, I've tracked some people over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. And I've, and I've tracked my hands. I was fortunate enough. My mom actually found a picture of my hand when I was five 
And I was, it was like the best gift I ever received <laughs> from my mom. <laughs> She's wow. like, look what I found in my drawer. And it was my little five-year-old hand and it was perfectly, uh, it was a perfect photocopy. So I could see like every single line and I could read it so clearly. Uh, so that was a, a huge gift. But I've been tracking my own hands for over 12 years now. Wow. And yeah, things can change quickly depending on what's going on with the person. So, you know, for example, if you're a person who doesn't change much, you know, you, you tend to stay home a lot or you tend to, you know, think the same things, you're with the same person, chances are your hands won't change very much either. Oh, wow. Okay. So, Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So the first thing, now I want to ask you, are you a right-handed person or a left-handed person? I am right-handed. Okay. So what we have here is your right hand. So this is what we call your active hand. It's going to be more about your developing self and your, um, so you can think of it as like your public self as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your passive hand is going to be more internal uh, more subconscious, more potential. So sometimes we'll see different variations on the two hands. The first thing I notice about you is you've got a very long ring finger. Okay. And I know this because we measure the fingers relative to each other. Okay. So you can see that this ring finger compared to your index finger is quite a bit longer and it's mm -hmm. almost as long as your middle finger. Okay, yeah. so Apollo is your finger of creativity. And we look at also your hand shape. So we combine it with your hand shape. You actually have short fingers and a rectangular palm. And this is what we call a fire hand. So your archetype is one that we would call the wheel of fortune. Okay, mm. so the wheel of fortune is somebody who can present themselves very well. They have kind of a magnetic personality and people will naturally be drawn to you. So you've got this, this just enthusiasm. I love fire hands because they have this natural um, kind of passionate energy about them. And they're very good at multitasking. So, you know, in terms of like if you need to do five things at once, you can do that. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and you can also uh, use your creativity in a variety of ways that excite you. You know, that's what we would hope you would do as a wheel of fortune. So you may underestimate yourself though, because you've got that Jupiter finger, which is shorter. And this is how you look at yourself. So you don't, necessarily see all of your talents as talents. You might just think anybody could do what you do. Mm. Okay. Okay. Uh, I like your thumb too. You got a nice big thumb. That is your willpower. And <laughs> <laughs> I see somebody with a good, strong willpower. Uh, your little finger also kind of juts a little bit away from the other fingers. Uh, which can be an indication of uh, just an interest in unusual things. Uh, mm. So not, not a bad way to be. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, so that's what I see. Now, for, as far as like who is your best match or who is a soulmate match for you, uh, you would want to go with your complementary element, which would be air. And that would be somebody with long fingers, and a square palm. Okay, so it would be actually the opposite hand shape of yours. And instead of having a strong ring finger, this is your also known as your fire finger, they would have a strong little finger. And so that match would be called the investigator archetype. So hmm. that would be your, your soulmate match, although any air hand could be a potential match for you as well. Um, but we would want to look at other indicators as well. So, Ooh. all right. So uh, what else would you like to know? Um, 
about the lines on my hands? Like what are some of the meanings on the actual lines on my palm? All right, let's, uh, let's take a blow up here of your hand. I love and this I, ink, by the way, this is fun. I, I was gonna say, yeah, I spilled on my hands that day, I remember. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, it's kind of interesting because um, I, I look at everything as actually significant, you know, so I, I feel like there really are no accidents. Uh, so sometimes it's like, well, well, what's being highlighted by this ink? You know, this mm -hmm. is actually kind of an interesting thing. So you have this strong Apollo finger and where is all the ink? It's all underneath your Apollo finger. So True. this is what we call your Apollo line. Okay, now your Apollo line represents your talents. And it's quite interesting how it's just like, boom, it just wants to be recognized. <laughs> it's like, look at me. <laughs> okay, so my, my question to you would be, are you utilizing your talents? Uh, because this is saying that it wants to be utilized. I would have to say at the current moment, some of my life is on hold. Motherhood has a, has a way of taking over one's life a little bit. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. Um, it's interesting. I dreamed about a mother last night and she was uh, she had a little baby and she thrust it into my arms. She's like, here, hold my baby. And she was also pregnant and she was like, would you rub my belly? <laughs> it, was so, it was so funny. Um, I don't dream about mothers very often, but, uh, but that always represents creativity. So um, there's, there's a lot of creative energy in your hand and it wants to be used. So maybe you need to find an outlet where you can use it, uh, even if it's just obviously part-time or, you know, on a, on a, on a small scale <laughs> or maybe doing it with your child too, you know, doing, doing creativity with your child. Cause at that age you, you have a three-year-old, they're, they're like absorbing everything. Very true. Right. So, and their hand is going to change quite, quite significantly uh, in the next three years. So I, I encourage you to take pictures of your child's hands uh, just to see like the development. It's, it's quite fascinating actually to see, okay. the, to see the changes. So, but yeah, so that's your Apollo. Okay. Uh, let's see what else is going on. I do see a little bit of stress, which is pretty normal for fire hands. By the way, fire hands can handle a little bit more stress than some other types. So all these lines that are kind of coming out in diagonal, those are some stress lines. I think everybody's under a lot of stress this year too. Mm -hmm. It's kind of being forced on us, which is really annoying. <laughs> I'm such a low key kind of person who doesn't get stressed <laughs> very easily. And it's sort of like, ay ay ay. <laughs> but that could be showing up. Okay, so this upper line in your hand, this is your heart line. Okay, your heart line represents your emotional flow. And it looks to me like you've got a little bit of a break here. This could be representing uh, an emotional stress that could be from a past relationship, you know, and that oftentimes will show up as a break in the heart line. Um, it looks like you are ultimately though, it wants to come over here to Jupiter, which is a giving kind of nurturing energy. So I would say motherhood is probably a good thing for you. And <laughs> yeah. you probably enjoy, like I could see you being a good mother and actually taking good care of your child. So that comes through that uh, heart line that's kind of moving that way. Let's, let's take a look at your other hand as well just for comparison. Well, that's not yours. <laughs> Here we go. My database is quite large. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got here. Yeah, you can see that break is on both hands. 
So yeah, we do have a little bit of heartline trauma. So that could also just represent something emotionally that wants to heal from your past. So it's always good to sort of pay attention to that. There's, you know, I don't know if you've had a, have you had any like breakups or anything like that in your past? Um, definitely some trauma in the past. You could say yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about it or? Um, not at this time. <laughs> Just, it's interesting because a lot of it has been coming up as of recently. Mm. So it's been interesting so that it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I've been experimenting. This actually brings up a good point. Uh, because I've been, I'm a healer too by nature, and I, I love to help people kind of heal and grow and evolve uh, through the exploration of their hands. And so my husband also has a pretty broken heart line, and he lost his uh, brother when he was like nine or 10 years old. He was pretty young. And so that created this like really horrible break on his heart line, <laughs> which makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I meditate every day as well. And one of the things that I was uh, picking up in my meditation was that you can actually draw your hand, okay? So this is something I would recommend that you do because you've got this break in your heart line. Um, you can just like outline, outline your hand, right? Mm -hmm. Draw in your heart line, but draw it in without a break. Mm. Okay? okay. And put that somewhere where you can look at it. It's sort of like a way to manifest something in your right. life. Okay. So if we're working on healing the heart line, healing the heart, healing the heart energy, um, if you start to see your line as a complete clear line, uh, that could actually start to shift the energy also subconsciously for you. Got okay. it. So it's an interesting uh, thought. Um, they actually did some studies uh, and they've done some uh, really unusual surgery stuff in the Far East that I've heard of. I think it was in Japan where they would actually do surgery on the lines of the hand and they would like redraw them <laughs> in order to change their destiny or their future or their psychological issue or whatever it was. So, I, and I, I don't have any like firsthand because we don't do this in the United States, obviously. Right. I don't know if this actually works or not, but it's an interesting thought um, when you consider, wow, if this line actually gets manipulated and changed, how does that change the person? Right. So, so why couldn't we just do it energetically and draw the hand the way we want to see it? So, so what I would recommend is draw this line, this heart line, okay, it starts underneath your little finger, and just draw it complete over here towards where it wants to go, which is Jupiter, uh, is where we're seeing it, okay? Okay. That's what I would recommend for you. Uh, let's go back over to that active hand again. So... Your relationships also are affected by the heart line. Okay, so your heart line essentially represents how you feel and how you show your feelings to others. So in a relationship, you are somebody who needs to get your emotions up and out. Okay? Yes. <laughs> so if you keep things in, that's actually not good for you and not what I recommend. Okay, especially because you're also fiery, you're a fiery wheel of fortune type. Uh, keeping things bottled up is a, a good way to get like high blood pressure or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's just okay. not good for you. Okay, makes sense? Absolutely. And your best match, if we were to look at, at your partner's heart line, I would hope that the, uh, the line would actually be pretty straight 
and probably ending underneath the Saturn or the middle finger. Because uh, again, this is like we look at what is your line, you're a watery line. We would want to find somebody who is complementary to water, which is Earth in this case, with the heart line. So air hand, strong little finger with an earthy heart line. So we can start to actually create um, characteristics. So an investigator type, by the way, so you can identify them, is somebody who is very curious. Makes sense, right? That um, the title, the investigator, right. is somebody who likes to know what's going on. They're not afraid to evaluate things. Uh, they're infinitely curious, and they they feed your fire. Okay, so ultimately, this is where the complementary energy comes in because they're going to feed that wheel of fortune. They actually make you more abundant just mm. by being around you. So, and what, and what you do for them is you can help them be themselves and actually be free to explore what it is that they're curious about. And you support them in their ideas and you allow them to express themselves uh, in a way that is nurturing and synergistic. Beautiful. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that neat how that shows yeah. up? Yeah. Yeah, I just love hands. They're so amazing. <laughs> they tell you exactly who, who do you belong with? Who do you resonate with? Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, so that's your best uh, type of match. And uh, the earthy heart line is somebody who is very loyal, somebody who you can depend on, somebody who will be there when they say they will be there. And they're not going to be looking at other people and going, oh, maybe the grass is greener over here. No, they're not like that at all. They are going to be incredibly committed to you. And they may not have a ton of friends or a ton of, um, you know, they may not express their feelings all the time, especially verbally, but they will be uh, showing their love through their actions. Yes. So that's, that's a, that's an earthy type of a heart line. So it's, it's a really beautiful kind of, um, it, it's a deep love and it's really set in stone <laughs> when it, when they decide on you. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. So that's cool. So what else would you like to know about? Um, well, I mean, I love hearing about what my hands sing. I see mm -hmm. lots, lots of lines coming from the wrist upwards. What do those mean? Well, uh, your lifeline, of course, is your major line, which is your vitality and your stability. Uh, it doesn't have anything to do with how long you're going to live, but we do look mm -hmm. at the quality of the line to see sort of how vibrant and vital you are. Uh, I do see a nice strong line here. Um, definitely not worried that you're sickly or, you know, anything <laughs> like that, <laughs> um, which is good. Uh, anytime we have a break in, especially the lifeline, it is a cause for concern. Um, but I don't see that with you. It does seem to come kind of right down here towards the center part of your palm, which means that you can, you can actually create home wherever it is that you go. Uh, so even though you're in Cottonwood right now, you could be somewhere else and you could also make that your home if you chose to. Um, fire types are quite adaptable as well. So you don't, don't feel like you need to be stuck uh, in one location. Okay. Okay. But I, but I do see stability. Um, so wherever you end up going, like if you stay or if you go, you're, I see you being like solid. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yes. So uh, the other major line we have is your, I'll, I'll move up here a little bit, your headline, which is underneath your heart line. It's the line that goes straight across your hand uh, in a horizontal fashion. This one represents your thinking. And I would say you're a fairly logical thinker. Um, it's a pretty straight line. And it's also not too long or too short. 
So Perfect. you spend an adequate amount of time in your head, but not too much. <laughs> that's a good thing. I would say that's a very good thing. Some people have a very hard time turning it off and that can create another set of problems. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yeah, this is a good a good solid headline and it's clear too. So again, we look at the quality of the line and a clear line shows clear thinking. Okay, so in this case cuz the the headline is about thinking. All right? Okay. Um okay. Yeah, I've seen uh, broken headlines before, and that's usually not a good sign. <laughs> um, right. I read it in a lady once who had a really major concussion, and mm -hmm. she couldn't walk properly for like almost a year, and she had this major break in her headline. Wow. So that, that was kind of a scary marker. Um, it doesn't always indicate accidents, but it certainly is something to be like, hmm. I, Aware of. Yeah, it's, it could be trouble. Uh, your fate line is also fairly strong. That's this line that comes, in your case, it's coming from Luna. This is called Luna over here, the far side of your hand. Uh, that is the least accessible because your thumb can't reach it. Okay, so that's why we call this lower region of the hand Luna. Okay. Uh, and Luna represents your deep subconscious and your fate line is originating there, which is your work pathway, or you can think of it um, as your career line. Okay. It doesn't mean that you're stuck in fate or anything like that, because of course all the lines can change. And what it's doing is it is a solid line, which tells me that you set goals early in your life. Okay, the higher, some people's fate lines will actually start much higher up in the hand. And this is not the case with you, which tells me that you're, you set your goals pretty early. And it's a pretty solid line going up the hand. So that tells me that you are a determined person. And yes. you are, and it ties in with Luna, meaning your subconscious or your creative energy. So again, it's like tap into your creative side. Something um, unique to you wants to come through. Okay. okay. So that's what I see with this fate line. And, um, and it does continue up your hand. It's, it's very clear. So a lot of people actually have uh, breaks in their fate line. Uh, and also yeah. they don't necessarily start early in life. So that's just something to be aware of. But, but yeah, so those are all your major lines. Um, the minor lines, you know, they, they have all sorts of numerous meanings depending on what they are and where they're showing up at. Um, let, let me just kind of look around and see if there's any that, that are kind of popping up a little bit. Uh, it looks like I do see a fairly strong spirit line over here underneath your Jupiter finger. So th this I also refer to as like your guardian angel line uh, represents a spirit who supports you because Jupiter is the finger of self. It's also where your ideals are located, by the way. So um, you've got your zone of ideals in the finger, the upper phalange of Jupiter. Mm -hmm. And so when this line is really strong, it's, it's showing you have very strong spiritual support. And so I don't know if you ever call on your angels or anything like that, but you certainly could. And you might get some really good information. Wonderful. So, yeah, especially with this, I, I love your Apollo. Your Apollo line really wants to be noticed. <laughs> so it's like, okay, we want to make sure you're using your talents uh, to their full capacity. So maybe, maybe calling on your angel over here might be a good idea to maybe open this up a little bit more. So that would be something I would recommend for you. Okay. So, but yeah, I love your determination in your fate line. I love your strong thumb, which is that strong willpower. Uh, I'd like to see your heart line heal up a little bit. Um, that's always difficult, though, sometimes when we go through pain. 
um, but it's totally possible. And you've also got a little bit of a challenge line kind of coming over here uh, and it kind of pops up again over here uh, underneath Apollo. And it's, it has to do with like criticism. So you could be fairly critical of yourself. Definitely. Uh, so you need, you need to ease up on that <laughs> is what I would recommend. Because if you're not your own best friend, you know, that um, can actually hold you back in a lot of ways. You know, I mean, I think almost all of us have this line. It's, it's one of the most common challenge lines to see in the hands. But it's a good reminder that it doesn't need to be the most common line, <laughs> right? Oh, these these right. lines can disappear and these lines can change. So I would actually suggest that maybe you could just be a little kinder to yourself and oh, see, how, see how that works for you. <laughs> Thank you. This has been very interesting. I loved every moment of it. <laughs> awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming on the show as always. And uh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Uh, I greatly appreciate you and your support. So uh, please feel free to post a comment or uh, again, if you want to be on the show, you can go to loveinyourhands.com forward slash podcast and you can apply to be a guest on the show. And remember, everyone, that life has more meaning when it's shared. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for listening to Love in Your Hands. Please rate, review, and subscribe to show your support. Have a question for Cynthia? Just post a comment. This podcast is sponsored by loveinyourhands.com, the place to find soulmate love fast. Start your free Soul Connection membership today, upload your hand photo, discover your relationship archetype, and start finding soulmate matches. Just go to loveinyourhands.com to get started.